Okay, so we're going to talk about the materials that you can use to make your lithograph. Um, you'll see in this picture we have a number of different items set out. Uh, the main thing that you will be using most likely to draw your image, at least for the beginning stages, are the litho pencils, or some people call them litho crowns. They are numbered, usually depending on which manufacturer you get them from, 1 through 5. Corn's crowns come 1 through 5, and Stone's crowns come 1 through 7. The lower numbers being the softer materials, and the higher numbers being harder pencils. It's similar to the way graphite pencils work. Lower number will give you a um, more diffused line, but also a richer black. And it's not that the black necessarily comes out when you transfer this to the printing ink in lithography, but that it's easier to obtain dark lines or dark images by using the softer pencil instead of a hard one to fill in those blacks. You can just do it faster and you get a different quality of line out of them. So here we have Corn's crowns, I have uh, Corn's pencils, uh, number one through five, and then I, I don't have the full set of Stone's pencils laid out here, but I do have a number four through seven, the seven being a, a really hard pencil. Uh, in addition to the pencils, which are the most basic material in lithography, we also have um, crowns, and this is the real crowns, the smaller square-shaped, kind of Conti crown-shaped materials. And these come in the same uh, grades as the pencils, 1 through 5 or 1 through 7, and they're just a different shape that you can use. Otherwise, they're identical to the, the materials used in the pencils. Similar to that, we have tablets, which are these um, large square drawing tablets. Again, going through the same numbers, soft to hard, 1 through 5. And then some of these larger round crowns that you can use for drawing. Mostly the variation here is to give you a variation of materials for mark making and the softness to vary the quality of that line and the ease with which you can draw darks or lights. Um, you'll find the number five crown holds a point really well and uh, will give you really nice, sharp, crisp lines and will let you do some really detailed work that the number one crown wouldn't let you do. And same with the tablets or the the crowns and pencils in general. Uh, in addition to the base materials, we also have here some material called rubbing ink. And I have two rubbing inks made by Corns. Um, rubbing ink is meant, instead of with a pencil where you would draw it on, rubbing ink is meant to be rubbed onto the surface indirectly. So either with a chamois or with your finger. And it's rubbed onto the surface to give really light, soft, delicate tones. You'll find as you start drawing with the pencils or tablets and crowns that it's hard to get a really soft, even tone across the surface. And that's what rubbing ink is meant to do, is to give you a really uniform, soft, gradated surface. That's what you're looking for. Now rubbing ink is very greasy most of the time in that you're pushing grease into the surface and it's a little bit harder to control. So it's probably not one that you'll start out using. And rubbing ink usually comes in hard, medium, and soft. Here I have the hard and medium in the corns, and right below it, the circle one are not tablets, they're actually the stones uh, version of rubbing ink. Uh, and I have a medium and a hard here, but it also comes in soft. Now to round out the dry drawing materials that you have available to you, uh, we can also use toner, the toner you would use in your printer to make lithographic marks. And the chemistry works a little bit differently with toner, but it is something that we have available to us. So here I have some lithocol. Uh, lithocol was a great product made by Duva. It's no longer in production. It's compressed toner that acts somewhat like a compressed charcoal as you draw. Nowadays, mostly we use toner loose, which is somewhat dangerous because of the small particle size or in a wash form. And we have a different set of processing to use toner, so I'm not going to discuss that right now. Uh, for wet drawing media, mostly in lithography, what we, what we have available to us to create tones is washes. And so here I have two different forms of washes. There are a lot of them out there. I have a Charbonnel um, 
touche wash high grade is the specific touche wash that I'm using here. And then I have a stone's crown touche wash and it, it's pretty much just one, the paste touche. Uh, although you can get it in different forms. With these, we mix them up into water and the grease and the water go into solution, essentially. And the water helps the grease to disperse over the element that we're drawing on. And then it, as it dries, it forms reticulation, uh, similar to graphite washes and painting and drawing. And the reticulation we can use to form tones, um, depending on how tightly spaced those lines are. So for these two washes here, the high grade and the stones paste touche, uh, you'll mix them up with water and a brush and then paint them onto your surface. I also have a stones crowns liquid touche, which makes the mixing a little bit easier. It comes liquefied already and you can dilute it as needed. In addition, one more um, wet drawing media that we can use is autographic ink. Now autographic ink isn't very good for making tones or washes, but it is great for making flats. And it's very fluid. Uh, so if you like to uh, use calligraphy or a crow quill pen or some kind of nib, like a calligraphic pen, then autographic ink is a great material to load into those, those different pens or to use wet straight out of the, the bottle, but it will go almost completely flat. It has no tone, it just goes black, uh, which makes it great for drawing materials um, in terms of writing, uh, because it will always go flat. Now, a few other things that we often use while drawing that I have here, uh, a variety of brushes. I have watercolor brushes, which I think are great for lithography in various sizes, uh, not only to put down washes and drying, but later when we get to processing as well. And a lot of people like the Japanese uh, style brushes. Those also hold a lot of wet media and are, are great for putting down washes as well. Uh, washes do really good with big fluffy brushes, so sometimes you can get away using makeup brushes to put down a nice wash as well. Uh, I'm not sure if that's cheaper or not, but it's definitely a, a possibility. Uh, in addition, when uh, we get to using photo plates or photographic elements in the lithography process, um, I have a Stabilo pencil here that helps to put down pretty much a line on any material that I would draw on, so mylar, acetate, and then uh, expose that onto a film. Uh, the Stabilo pencil just draws really well on pretty much everything and gets a nice dense uh, mark out of it that will block the light. And in reality, when we get to photo, there's a whole nother set of materials that we'll talk about. Uh, my Sharpie, uh, I use a lot for laying out. Um, I have, a, this is a ceramic, I call it a teasing needle. I'm not sure what they call it in ceramics that helps me when I'm scratching registration or um, pretty much I use this all the time for various reasons. And I have two more things here. One, a really good pencil sharpener to help me as I'm working with my crowns. Dollar store pencil sharpeners just don't cut it. So this one is a, a nice pencil sharpener and that will actually sharpen all of my crowns fairly well. And then I have an ink knife and mine's a, a fairly nice ink knife although some people go to the dollar store and just pick up uh, other ink knives. This one has some nice pliability to the, to the knife. The blade bends a little bit, and that makes it so my hand doesn't hurt quite as much as I'm mixing my inks. And one more thing that I have here is a dusting brush that, it's just a, a Japanese hockey brush, nice um, soft fibers that I use as I'm drawing to dust off any materials that might come off of my crown or my tablet so that I don't accidentally hit those and push them into my drawing surface. So just getting the uh, shavings or the stuff that falls off of my crown off of the plate before it starts to make a mark. And that pretty much is a, a good overview of the materials that you'll have available to you as you begin lithography in the drawing process.